Well, I'm not uh, kind of pathologically opposed to all forms of testing. Uh, testing can be helpful, and sometimes multiple choice tests can be quite helpful, uh, as long as you understand what they're about and, and what all this is for. Um, it, it, there are, as far as the core of it, there are three main processes in organised education. There's the curriculum, however formally it may be set down or not, but the curriculum which is what it is we want people to learn. And that doesn't just mean propositional knowledge, it can be social habits, it could be aptitudes, it could be forms of relationship, values, all sorts of things are eligible to be included in, in a curriculum, not just facts and information of a propositional type. So there's, anyway, there's the curriculum, which is what we want people to learn, which is why we have education systems. We assume the things they ought to learn, and that's, that's what we put in the curriculum. Um, secondly, there's pedagogy, which is the process by which we help them to do that. If we didn't have that, they'd just go off and do it on their own, and some people do, of course. But in organised education, we have teachers, and their job is pedagogy. So there's curriculum, there's pedagogy, what we want them to learn, how we help them to learn it. And then there's assessment, which is uh, how we form judgments about how they're getting on. And broadly with an assessment, you know, well, there's a lot of discussion about the nature of assessment and the purpose, but, you know, but broadly speaking, there's formative and summative. Formative assessment is where you're making judgments about um, how people are progressing so you can help them keep going and develop further. And some of summative assessment is the process by which you say, well, this, the, it, the work is done, how do we get on with it? And the issue for me is that assessment is often misunderstood. Assessment really uh, has uh, two elements to it, a process of assessment. There's a description and a comparison. So for example, if you were to say of somebody, um, they can uh, sing Nessum Dorma, um, or you know, they can row across the Atlantic single-handed. That's not an assessment. That's just a, a statement of something that is the case. It's a description of what they can do. They can run a mile in four minutes. It's just a description. But if you compare it to some other performance, you know, if, if you start comparing the way they sing Nessum Dorma to Pavarotti, um, or if you say they, they are the fastest miler in the county, or the second fastest, that's an assessment because you're then comparing what they can do to some external standard. And it's the comparison that's at issue here. So a lot of assessments, you see, are properly conceived, assessments can be purely descriptive. This is what they can do, this is what they have done. Um, as soon as you start comparing it to something else, that's what you, where we start to get in trouble. We get into trouble in, in a couple of ways. One of them is that very many assessments are now numerical or uh, they're alphabetical. And they're very heavy on comparison and very light on description. So you know, people write an essay and they get a B for it. Uh, well, it, it doesn't, all it tells you is a rank. It doesn't tell you anything about the qualities of the work. I remember years ago speaking to some kids who'd done a four-year program in dance for their GCSE. And I, I said to one of the, the girls there, I said, what did you get out of the course? And she said, I got a B. I thought, well, you must have got more than that. So the problem I have with, with a lot of standardization is that firstly, they are very heavy on comparison and very light on description. So you don't know much about it, even though the, the conceit is that you're supposed to. It's just a rank. So they're, they're not very helpful for formative reasons, and they're not very informative to other people either. And secondly, they tend to uh, fulfill what somebody once called McNamara's fallacy, which is after the American Defense Secretary, Robert McNamara, uh, who was a real data guy, um, in, in that they make the uh, measurable important rather than the important measurable. So you focus on the things that can be assessed in that way, and the implicit message is that other things don't matter so much. But when you start getting into really interesting territory, like ethical decisions or aesthetic judgments, then choosing between four options isn't a very smart way to go about things. So it's not that I'm against them, I think, but I think that for the most part they subvert some of the deeper purposes of assessment. In their place, they can be helpful. Standardized tests of some sorts can be quite helpful diagnostically. I mean, I've often said if I have a medical exam 
I want to know what my cholesterol level is on some agreed standard. I don't want my doctor to tell me on some scale you made up in the car. You know, your cholesterol is level orange. You know, I, I don't know that. I, give me the numbers, doctor, then tell me what to do with them. And so they can provide helpful data. The trouble now is that in America particularly, they have become not a way of improving the culture of education, they have become the culture of education. The whole thing is the test, getting through the test, and it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Nowadays, the piece of league tables, which have you know, the very best intentions behind them, have nonetheless become a beauty contest for education ministers across the world who pose around according to where they are on the rankings or get depressed if they're too low down. I remember saying that the piece of league tables have become like the Eurovision Song Contest of education. We all know what the Eurovision Song Contest has done for the quality of popular music, you know, which is not very much. So it's not, it's not the fact of assessment, it's, it's the nature of it and it's the purposes to which it's being put that concern me most.